Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And a couple of birthday cards using a ton of ink smushing. I used this uh, So Many Candles wafer die that came out in Simon Says Stamps December release. I think it was the December release. I'll have links to everything down below, like always. And die cut it multiple times because everything is connected which I was like that's actually really cool because I can get a whole bunch of die cut candles with one pass so I did it multiple times did a bunch of ink smushing with distress inks splatter pulled out an oldie but goodie 3d embossing folder just went to town and had fun so like I said links to everything will be in the description box below and then if you keep watching I will show you guys how I made these cards so for all of the candle We'll call them the candle bases. <laughs> I'm using Canson XL watercolor paper. You could also use uh, Ranger Distress watercolor paper. That works perfect for ink smushing. Um, pretty much for the most part, any watercolor paper will work. Or things like Distress Heavy Stock. I've also done videos showing that with ink smushing. It needs to be something that can handle a lot of water. Uh, regular cardstock, not so much. It's going to start falling apart, etc. So, like I always do if I'm doing uh, more than one die cut sort of a thing, I get everything ready ahead of time. So, I just trimmed down my pieces of watercolor paper and made a little pile. And then I grabbed just some yellow cardstock for the flames because it's like I'll die cut these at the same time and then set them aside for later. And then for all my die cutting, I'm using my uh, Anna Griffin Empress. I can use the the mini plates because I've shown in like my live streams and whatnot and in some of my videos I have the Anna Griffin Empress Mini machine and now that I've finally got my hands on the big one um, you can use the mini plates in the big machine which do you need the mini plate no but I already had them so when I'm when they fit on the mini plates I'll run those through the machine you know why not anyway I do all my die cutting at once and those little little tiny candle flames I just pop those into a little triangle tray because I'll be setting those aside so I don't knock them all over the floor like I generally tend to do oi honestly if we add it up all the time I spend <laughs> looking for things I've misplaced or the, all the things I knock on the floor I, I that you know that would be the extra hours that I keep joking about that I need anyway did all my die cutting and then I decided to snip apart these candle pieces because I needed um, enough for each color. I already had my colors picked out. These are all Distress inks. And this is kind of like my go-to rainbow combo, which I'll have links specifically to the colors, but it's Picked Raspberry, Carved Pumpkin, Mustard Seed, Mermaid Lagoon, and Wilted Violet. And you can do this with any water reactive type ink. I've, again, shown this in many videos. I've done it with Simon Says Stamp Positively Saturated Inks. I've done it with Concord and Ninth Inks. Um, you can use Distress Oxide Inks. Like, really, the sky's the limit within reason. Um, but Distress Inks, this is, this is what they're formulated for. You know, the inky spraying fun techniques. This will never get old for me. You know, I've shown ink smushing in a bajillion of my videos. Can you do the ink smushing and then die cut? 100%. Is it a lot more messy? Die cutting first and then it's all over your fingers? Heck yeah. I'm fine with that. You just I just scrub my hands with a loofah and gentle hand soap after I'm all done. And that gets rid of like pretty much all the ink. And I don't know. I don't know why I like doing it this way. Like it is literally like I was covered in ink. It is messy. And I like it. <laughs> so. With ink smushing, you need a surface that the ink will beat up on. So I'm just using uh, the little nonstick craft sheet that you can get for the Tim Holtz glass media mat. This comes in many different sizes, but this size is perfect when I'm doing things like this. I highly recommend one of these because they're backed with silicone. So it just clings to my glass surface and inks bead up on this. And that is key. You want your inks to bead up. Um, if I was just using my glasswork surface and I've actually shown that in videos, if you mush the ink pads onto it and then spray, it just turns into a puddle. It doesn't bead up. It's, it's interesting. The surface really does matter. So you just smush your ink pads onto the nonstick craft sheet, spray with a bit of water, everything beads up and then you smush. 
your die cuts, your background, whatever it is you're doing, you smush. And then you dry between the layers. And that is key because wet on wet blends, wet on dry layers. And drying in between the layers, that's where you get all that texture and speckly bits and more intensity and just yoss. If you didn't dry in between the layers, everything would just meld into one another. Again, it's kind of personal preference because you do whatever works for you. But drying in between the layers, that's where I get all of that texture and just oh, fabulousness. And I'm using just my Ranger heat tool to dry this. You can also use an embossing tool as well. The heat tool is just nicer in for things like this because it disperses the air. It's not directing the air in, you know, a narrower stream like we do for heat embossing. And then I'd also pulled out one of my little Simon Says Stamp Positively Everything tools. That's that little aqua tool you guys see me holding. I did that because even though I technically have asbestos fingers, like heat doesn't often bother me very much, you know, because I'll be cooking and doing things and yeah, holding things when I'm heat embossing and it just, I don't even notice. However, you can see I'm using that heat tool a lot and yeah, I was like, crap, this is going to take me a while. And then I remembered, I was like, I have a whole stack of these little silicone tools and that's literally what they're made for. They're heat resistant. I will say, I, and you'll see me, I switched to another tool, same one, just a different color. But even though these are heat resistant, I'm using this heat tool a lot. I've sped this this up in editing. This is, I'm, I'm working very fast, you know, magically fast. I don't move this quickly. But I was using my heat tool a lot because I was drying all these layers and the silicone tool does start to retain the heat after a while. So after a bit, I ended up setting that one aside and just grabbing another one. So I could just keep going in my zone. Because, yeah, I did all these candles. I did many layers. Um, when you're ink smushing, if you're doing multiple colors, and again, I've shown this in a bunch of videos. If I'm doing multiple colors on one piece, one background, or one die cut, I will generally limit my layers to maybe three Again, it always just depends on a bunch of different factors, but I find if you're combining colors, if you end up adding, like you just keep adding, 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 it'll st everything starts to just kind of blend together and turn muddy and you don't really get, you know, all the fun, the fun bits. But when you're doing ones like this, where it's just one color, multiple times, like over and over and over again, this is where I will do many. And I think with some of these, I did, you know, four or five plus layers because it also intensifies because I wanted these to be bright. And the more colors, you know, the more layers you add, you know, the ink starts getting more and more intense. And, you know, I'm getting the texture and the speckly bits. And I just, this was fun. This was a lot of fun. <laughs> so I've switched to a different uh, little positively everything little tool there so that the other one can cool off. And yeah, just setting them on there. And that way I could, you know, blast these with my heat tool. And it also kept it away. You can't really tell because I'm filming straight down. But I was also doing that so I could avoid getting the um, heat tool over the craft, the craft sheet. The craft sheet is also heat resistant. But I didn't want to dry any of the ink sitting on the craft sheet because I was still using it. You know, it's like I smushed the die cuts dry that layer and then smush them back into what was still on the craft sheet. So having a little positively everything tool just solved that kind of issue because like I said, I don't have a whole lot of space even though I'm working here in my garage. But yeah, my actual like actual workable space is fairly small. <laughs> so it's especially noticeable with this last cut with the wilted violet. The more layers added, it got like so much more intense, like nice bright purple. Love. So I kept doing this until I was just happy and had all of these sets of candles covered in all these different colors of ink. And then once they were done, cleaned everything off, I put these in my splat box and then I'm going to splatter them with black soot distress paint. Not huge splatters, but it just gives enough to give little fleckly bits and texture and fun things like that. So I shook up my black soot distress paint, put it on my little palette. All the candles are in my uh, little splat box. And then I just used my fan brush and just tapped that over all of these little um, die cuts. And again, it's not super obvious, but that was kind of the point. It just gives that little extra something. You could skip this. You could also use something instead, like just the white gouache, like I usually show. That's what I usually do with like splatter or uh, perfect pearl powder, you know, give it a little bit of shimmery splatter. But I did this also knowing I was going to do gold splatter later on. <laughs> 
I went all out. These are te- what I would call technically simple cards for the most part, but I kind of went all out with them. It was it was fun. You know, their birthday rainbow candles. Why not? Why not? So pulled out even more paint because it's like it needs more splatter. You know, we, we needed more cowbell. So after all that splatter was dry, which didn't take very long, I took a Copic marker. This is just my little 110 special block Copic marker. I use it for very random little things like this. This was to just quickly color the little wicks because I was like, they wouldn't look like this. They would be black because they'd all be lit. They're on, you know, they're on fire. The wicks will be black. So any marker will work for this. It doesn't have to be a Copic marker, just something to cover the little wicks. I just slap that on there. You know, it's, it's pretty simple. So I went along, added that to all of these little, all these little wicks. And then um, once that was done, I just needed to adhere those little die cut flames. So those are in that little triangle tray that I showed earlier. And I just put little dabs of glue. So just craft tacky glue on the little ends of all these candles. And then I just picked up the little flames with my um, embellishment wand and then pressed it into place. And since all these candles are connected and all the little they got all the little dots on the ends of them for the flames this was actually a lot faster than I thought it was going to be and I wanted to get these all adhered into place first and because I had it in the back of my mind I was like I think I want to make the flames look a little bit not boring I guess is the easiest way to because I was like oh the candles themselves have so much texture you know like all that color and texture and the splatter everything and I was like and then the flames are just meh you know I was like, huh. Another way though, you could totally skip what I'm going to do and you could like die cut these. Oh man, die cut them from like yellow glitter cardstock or like orangey, orangey yellow sort of glitter cardstock. That would look really fun. That's another option. Didn't even think about that till just now. Anyway, I'm so happy with what I did. It's fine. So I do all of this just like with everything. You know, I work in batches. I did all that die cutting at the same time. I did all of the ink smushing. You know, I did all the splattering and then I did, you know, colored all the wicks at once. And now I'm doing all of the little flames, just adhering them to place. Like working in batches like this, it makes the whole process go um, a lot smoother. And then I just move on to the next step. So having all these little flames adhered into place, they'll be secure. You know, the glue's dry, they're not moving. Then I took another Copic marker. This time I used an orange one and just flicked that from kind of the bottom of each little candle flame to make it look just a little more I'm not like going obviously for like full-on realism here but it just made them look a little better so it's not just a little flat piece of yellow cardstock and I was gonna leave it there but then I pulled out a yellow Copic marker as well and just blended them together (laughs) it just it just gave it that little extra something so went through and did that and because the flames are adhered he's kind of it made it so much easier because I was like trying to hold those tiny little things in place to add little details no I don't have time for that but with them adhered to those candles simple so then my background I used um Simon's party balloons 3d embossing folder this goes through the empress machine I cannot take credit for this it was one of Christina Warner's videos and she was like oh a Simon says 3d embossing folder and one empress die cutting plate works like a charm this will not work with any other brand of embossing folders because they're all different in terms of like the folder itself but specifically for simon's embossing folders i just spray the cardstock like i always do with water that just softens the fibers so i get a better impression so i laid out my flower sack cloth sprayed the cardstock put it in the embossing folder and then stuck it with one cutting plate and ran it through my empress machine perfection love it Any other embossing, like any other brand embossing folder, I have no clue. (laughs) No clue what sandwich options with any of them. I still have to like figure that out with just even my other, um, my Platinum 6 machine. Because that one is what I use for up until now for all my embossing folders. And I've shown that in all my videos, what works with the Simon embossing folders. But yeah, all the brands are different and the thicknesses vary, etc. And I just highly recommend once you figure it out. And a lot of brands will list like different options for different machines with their folders but it's also because again machines can even vary you know from person to person because they just it's just the nature of it so it's to write your own little list like figure out what works I still need to do that I'm telling you guys you know do as I say not as I do um 
I need to do that for myself. Make a little list that I'm going to like tape to my <laughs> in, in my die cut machines for the different uh, brands of folders and what works for me. So that, yeah, every time I go to use like Simon's brand or Spellbinder's brand or Honeybee's brand, you know, it'll be like, oh, this is the sandwich I need. This is what works. So that's that on that. So anyway, I emboss those backgrounds. I cut them down a bit. I trim them down to like five inch, five and a quarter by four inches, just slightly smaller than an A2 card. And then for all the candles, I had definitely enough to do two cards. That was kind of my plan from the get-go. The The main intent with this wafer die, with um, the so many candles wafer die, is they're all connected on the bottom to make it easier. You can just adhere them to the card and then just trim off the bottom like they're all held into place but I didn't want them in you know a straight line the way they are in the die I wanted them kind of wonky and layered all over each other and you know this rainbow order so I snipped them all apart and then adhered um, I set aside one of each color from the sets because those will go on the inside of the card and then um, so then I'm left with because I'd figured out how many I had of each candle cut that in half because separate them between two cards etc etc and I adhered three of each color to this um, balloon background just with craft tacky glue and just yeah all wonky overlap them etc and then once the glue was dry flipped over the background trimmed off the excess and then the remaining candles I popped up with some thin um, foam strips this is like waffle flowers thin white foam strips put that on the back of these candles and then pop these into place so these will be popped up with that bit of dimension just to give it that little extra something so ran that along the back of each one of these candles pop them into place and then obviously like I repeated this whole process on the second card didn't bother filming that because it's redundant and same thing flip that over trimmed off the excess and then once I've got both card fronts done more splatter <laughs> told you I wasn't done with the black splatter so I put the uh, card fronts back into my slap box. This time I'm using my Gonzai Tombi Starry Colors and doing gold splatter. Just, just cause, you know, it's a birthday card and it's super bright and cheerful. So I just splatter this all over the candles, all over the background for that extra little touch of gold. Did that, let those dry, everything's good to go. So once those, um, were good and splattered and I washed my brush off, set everything aside, let those dry as well. And then for my sentiments, I'm using the, this is kind of an older set. I forget when this came out. It came out a while ago. These are the reverse birthday celebration sentiment strips from Simon and pulled those out, chose the sentiment I wanted to use, trim those out with just with my little guillotine trimmer. And then my card bases are also gonna just be top folding A2 white note cards. And I've got my extra little candles that I'd set aside to adhere to the inside of the cards. So same thing, just adhered those with craft tacky glue. Once those were adhered, let the glue dry and then flip those over and trimmed off the bits hanging off the bottom. Got those trimmed off. And then I just adhered the sentiment strips right on top of those candles. So that finishes off the inside of these cards. So got that adhered into place. And then the um, balloon and candle backgrounds that I had done are going to get adhered to the card fronts, again, with just craft tacky glue. So put that on the back of these, adhered these to the card bases. And oh, yeah, I was talking about whatever, embossing or whatever I was talking about earlier. I used the Wish Big die cut set that came out again I think with a dice number release I had die cut that from scraps of white cardstock and Simon's matte gold cardstock and the outline from black cardstock and stuck them together for dimension like I always do which I'd shown earlier in the video when I was going on about whatever else I was going on about this is my brain space you guys like I have the memory of a goldfish it seems anyway <laughs> pop those into place and added a little bit of foam tape behind these as well um, in the kind of open gaps between the candles that were already popped up with the same foam tape. 
So I put that on the back of the sentiments along with a little bit of the craft tacky glue. Press those into place. As always, one could be done here, but of course I'm going to add a little bit of bling, just a bit, just, just to finish it off. So some little gold sparkle crystals. So just stuck a few of those onto each of these cards. And then once I was kind of happy with the placement, I'm just going to pop those into place with little dabs of craft tacky glue. Adhere those down, let the glue dry, and these cards are complete. So like I said, bright and cheerful and speckly and textured and shiny and just fun, super fun. So like always, I will have links below the video in the description box. You can just expand the description box. I'll have a link to my blog post. I'll have supply list with links to everything I used. You can check that out below if you are interested. It'll all be down there for you guys. Thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping, commenting, subscribe if you haven't. I'd love to have you. And I'll see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.